What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Girl Who Talks Sports, the podcast where we talk sports and other girly things. I'm Sam Cardona, and thank you so, so much for listening today. As you can see, I got my Santa hat on, I got my Christmas lights here, I have my mug that says life is hard with a little kitty cat on it. So I'm super, super excited to get into today's episode. Before we do, obviously, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. I hope everybody's having a great holiday season so far. Obviously, it's not the same as what it usually is, but we'll try to make the best of it as much as we can. Before we get into today's episode, um, obviously, we got to do our plugs. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever it is that you get your podcasts from. Uh, make Please subscribe, follow, leave a review on all of those platforms. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, The Girl Who Talks Sports. We put up full-length episodes of the podcast. We put up mini-segment videos. We put up extra content videos. So if you're just listening to the podcast, you're missing out on some stuff on the YouTube channel. So make sure that you give that um, to subscribe. And also, if you're watching the video, like, uh, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. Don't forget to do that. And finally, don't forget to follow us on social media. TGWTS podcast on both Instagram and on Twitter. So make sure that you give us a follow there as well. We have a great guest on today's episode. We had Caitlin Leaner of the Bear Down Girl podcast, which I was so, so happy to have her on. Um, it was really, really good time. So I can't wait to get into that, that interview. We talked about the Bears and the Vikings game because she's a big Bears fan. And her podcast is mostly about the Bears. But we talk about other things in the NFL. We talk about the Jets getting their first win. We talk about the Eagles situation with their quarterbacks, which is our tea time for this week. So we go into that whole situation there. And then we also talk about the Bills, Patriots, the AFC East. It's a good time. So we will get into that in just a second. But before we get into that, I do want to discuss the game that happened on Monday night football. And that is the Steelers Bengals game. To be quite honest with you guys, um, this was uh, pretty awful, pretty awful in terms of the Steelers, because obviously the Bengals going into this game were two and 10 and one, I believe, like, we're not looking good. Joe Burrow got hurt, not playing for the rest of the season. It basically should have been a big win for the Steelers, but the Steelers ended up losing, losing to, to the Bengals of all teams, 27 to 17. And it wasn't even close. The whole, the beginning of the first half, they shut them out. It was like 17, nothing, not a good look for the Steelers. And to be quite honest, a lot of people have talked about this throughout the season. They were like, Hey, is, are the Steelers actually good? Are they overrated are they even should they even be in the conversation in terms of the best team in the AFC East Mm. I apologize the AFC North so that that's been a really big thing and also this is the first game in 11 in 11 games that the Bengals have beaten the Steelers so that's about if they play twice a year that's about five or six years that the Bengals haven't beaten the Steelers so even in the Steelers off years they've beaten the Bengals so this is not really great for the Steelers. And and while they might get into the playoffs, the Browns are making their way up. They're only one game out of first place right behind the Steelers. So the Steelers might not even win the division. And in the beginning of this year, people were saying that they were going to go undefeated this year. I've said that they were going to go undefeated this year. It's crazy how the tables have turned in this. They had Ryan Finley as the quarterback in this game, which is actually kind of funny. I have seen Ryan Finley play in his college days. Uh, he went to NC State, and my best friend Sarah used to go to NC State, and one weekend I went down when we were in college. We went to a football game together. Ryan Finley was the starting quarterback, and it was probably one of the best football games I've ever seen with my own two eyes. It was so much fun. It was fantastic. But so to see Ryan Finley in here, he gets his first win basically in the NFL and the Steelers had two total yards in the first 13 plays and two turnovers this Bengals defense was on top of things so 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 on top of things 
I I saw like so many times where they could have turned the ball over even more. And I don't know what's going on with Ben. I don't know what's going on with this offense. I don't know what's going on with this run game. The defense is, you know, the Steelers defense is not too, too bad, but this Steelers offense really is not looking great. And the other thing of this whole game and this whole Steelers team as a whole that I think I just want to discuss really quick before we get into this interview with Caitlin is that (sighs) Juju. (laughs) We have to talk about Juju because Juju, Juju's been dancing on the team's logos when they are going to away games. It's not fantastic. It really, okay, so here's the thing. Here's the problem that I have with this whole situation. I really don't have a problem with Juju doing his dances and everything like that. I understand him being on the logo. It's disrespectful. Mike Tomlin even said, like, he's aware of it. He's going to try and talk to Juju. But, like, a lot of people, I feel like, are saying, like, hey, like, stop doing that. You're being weird or, like, stop doing your stupid TikTok dances. And to be quite honest, it feels like while dancing on the team's logos, especially in the past three weeks when you've lost these games, is not a good look, I just really am annoyed at the fact that people are getting so on top of Juju and like being really mean to him about it. I don't know. I just, I don't think Juju would ever do anything to be like, oh yes, you know, screw this team. I don't care. Like I'm going to dance on that logo. He's doing it because he enjoys TikTok and he enjoys the dances. And that's the kind of person that he is. I just, I don't like the idea of people making fun of Juju for doing stuff that he enjoys. Again, I really, I can agree with the fact that maybe dancing on the logos is not the best look for them, especially if they were winning or losing. If they were winning, it would be like, you know, boasting and and being disrespectful in that way. But in this one, it just looks bad because they're not winning. And ah, this whole dancing situation is just weird. But if Juju wants to dance and if Juju wants to make TikToks and him and Chase Claypool are out here doing their thing, then let them do it. Yeah, again, dancing on the logo is not great, but if they want to make a TikTok in the locker room, like, people are getting so upset about it for no reason. Like, relax. It's an app. It's an app in which Juju enjoys putting content out on. This isn't, this whole thing that I'm doing is something that I enjoy doing. And, like, I just, I, it bothers me that people are getting on Juju because of that. But, again... The logo thing, if you want to dance on the sidelines, Juju, if you want to dance before the game, if you want to hype yourself up, do that. But the logo thing is, you know, a little bit right over the line. And and I don't, I I agree with the fact that maybe we should figure that out before you guys finish off this season. Okay, I'm done ranting about the Steelers and I'm going to be, I'm going to (laughs) done. I am very hyper. There's coffee in this mug, and this is like my second cup today. So Um, let's get into this interview with Caitlin. Again, super, super stoked about it. It's it's, it's really great. Um, The host of the Bear Down Girl podcast. I hope that you guys enjoy it, and uh, here it is. All right, guys. Today we are joined today by Caitlin Leaner um, of the Bear Down Girl podcast. Caitlin, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so let everybody know what your podcast is about, um, where they can find it, all that good stuff. Sure. So I host the Bear Down Girl podcast. Um, Right now, I'm dropping episodes twice a week, game previews and game recaps. It's basically all focused on the Chicago Bears. I'm I'm a diehard fan. And um, I started at what, beginning of 2018? And it's on iTunes, Spotify, and Podbean app. So any of those platforms, you can go listen to it. Great. And we obviously are going to talk about the Bears today because they had a really big win. And we're going to go into a couple other um, stories from this weekend. So let's start off with your Bears. Obviously, they came out with a great division win over the Vikings this week. How are you like feeling going into this game? Were you nervous about it? Like, did you think that you guys were going to do good, bad? What what were you thinking? I was feeling pretty confident somewhat. Um, And I think it's because of the way this offense is looking because it just feels like this offense is taking like a step in the right direction. It's like, finally, everything's clicking for them. And in the past, you know, 
with the defense playing so great, I still would worry because the offense, I didn't know if they could really step up to the plate, but now it's kind of like we're putting up a lot of points consistently. And so I felt like after the last couple of weeks, if they could just get off to a hot start and score early, I felt like they'd be in a good situation and which is what happened. Right. And obviously you guys have had a bit of a quarterbacking issue throughout this season. Um, I'm curious what, like, which, which side are you on? Like, are you on the Mitch Trubisky side or are you on like the Nick Foles side? So anyone who, I mean, all my fellow Bears fans who I'm friends with, like Twitter is really where I communicate with all Bears fans. Mm -hmm. And anybody who knows me knows I'm obsessed with Mitchell Trubisky. So (laughs) I've always been his biggest fan girl, I guess you could say. (laughs) But I knew like when he got benched, I understood why he got benched because he was just kind of repeating the same old mistakes. He wasn't really growing and it just felt like it was getting a little bit stale. So we had to make a change. So initially I was okay with the decision to go to Nick Foles and it worked out against the Buccaneers. And then it worked out when he came in against the Falcons, Mm -hmm. but then we started to really dip when it came to offense and we couldn't get any kind of firepower, no touchdowns, nothing. And realizing what we were missing is Mitchell brings the athleticism and the scrambling ability that Nick Foles can't do. And so it kind of, we kind of, the bears kind of backed their way into having Mitchell come back because Nick Foles initially got hurt. Right. So it's like, I don't think they were, it felt like they weren't planning to make a change. It just happened to work that way. And now it's like, Whoa, I'm so glad they went back to Mitchell. So, I mean, I think if you're comparing the two, obviously Mitchell would be the better option, but it's still like, I need, I need to see more from Mitchell in order for her to say he's the future. Yeah, that was going to be what I was going to ask you next. Like, do you, I mean, do you see him in the future? Do you see him progressing to a point where you guys don't have to worry about, you know, things going wrong or anything like that? I mean, if he keeps playing like this, he's, he's asking to get re-signed and right. maybe, I don't know, you just never know. I, if he can <laughs> continue to put a bunch of great games together, maybe him being bench was what, like he needed to kind of like really, I don't know, get it together. And so I guess it's just a matter of what he does the rest of the season. If we go on some kind of run, then it's like, okay, the bears almost have to resign him, but it's still like, I don't know. I just need to see more from him. (laughs) Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. And I know that uh, you were on the brew party um, with Andy Hopper as well. And I was on there too. And like, now we kind of chat all the time about the bears and he was telling me that he's a big Mitch Trubisky guy too. So yeah. it seems like, like, you know, like the diehard Bears fans, you know, in their heart, they want to keep Mitch around because, you know, Nick Foles, you know, he popped in and he did a little bit of good, did a little bit of bad. And now he's kind of out, you mm-hmm. know, really wasn't going to be your, your guy for forever, I, I guess. But right. in terms of the playoffs, I mean, you guys won this division game. I know like you're not at the same level as the Packers in the NFC North. But do you think that your playoff hopes are still alive here? Like, do you think that there's any chance that the Bears can still make the playoffs? I mean, the schedule the rest of the season. So we have the Jaguars, where the Jaguars are probably trying to, like, tank now because the Jets win. Right. Yeah. So it's like, that's going to be a winnable game. And then you think maybe the Packers in Week 17 won't have anything to play for. They'll have everything pretty much lined up for the playoffs. So those are two games that possibly could be winnable situations for the Bears. And all they would need is the Cardinals to lose one game because the bears have the tiebreaker over the Cardinals. So, I mean, it's probable it's it, basically, we're just crossing our fingers that the Cardinals lose at least one. So I feel like they're peaking at the right time. If they, you know, get some things happen to go their way and they get into the playoffs or like I said, you never know. It's one of those wild card teams that get hot at the right time. Who knows mm-hmm. what'll happen in the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, at this point, you guys, I mean, you started the, the season on like a five game win streak, three of those being Mitch Trubisky, you know, behind yeah. center. So I, I wouldn't be all that surprised if that actually happened. I think that that could be one of those things that they just toss in there and they're like, oh, look, the Bears are in the playoffs. And you guys have been making the, I don't think you guys have missed the playoffs recently, have you? We, so we made the playoffs in 2018. We won our division, but then last year we kind of went eight and eight. So we missed the playoffs. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's kind of with, I mean, we're, ever since we got Matt Nagy, we've been a super competitive team. So it's like, it's always come down to the wire in the season. So um, we'll see, hopefully they can. I mean, I feel like the, the odds are in our favor right now, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah. 
What What are your thoughts on Matt Nagy? Because I know some people are kind of like fire everybody at this point, but that was kind of before you guys were winning. Right. When we were going through that like six game losing streak, I was kind of like, okay, this is getting a little out of hand. And it feels like my issue was always kind of being with Ryan Pace or general manager, because I mean, he's the one who picked Mitchell Trubisky. Matt Nagy wasn't our coach then. So he's not a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people were a little too hard on Matt Nagy. And you think about what he was dealing with. We had a pretty bad offensive line and quarterbacks were a bit shaky. And so I feel like people are just trying to pin it all on Matt Nagy when I feel like sure Matt Nagy has his flaws and he gave up play calling. And I mean, we're, running way more smoothly on offense. So maybe that's, you know, the fact that he has more room to just be a head coach now, I feel like that's better for him as well. So I think, you know, he's not perfect, but I always thought he was a great head coach. He just always seems to get this team fighting every single game. Even last year when we were pretty much last couple of weeks, we had nothing to play for. We still managed to finish out and win and get an eight and eight record. So, so far, no losing record for Matt Nagy. So I don't know why people give him so much stress. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you know, yeah, that, that wasn't a great run that you guys have had for the last few games there. But right. th- things are getting better. Could, yeah. it, could, it could be on the up and up, especially if they make the playoffs. Like, there's no way that they can fire him unless – I mean, they oh, could. Yeah. But, but if you make the playoffs, like, you shouldn't fire your head coach. And, like, what was it, like two years ago he was coach of the year? He was coach of the year. Yeah, his first year. We went 12 and four. So I feel like Bears fans tend to like be prisoner of the moment sometimes and just kind of, you know, fire everybody if we lose a couple of games. So it's like we just got to stay calm and just see how the season finishes out. And then we'll, you know, determine what what should happen with the coaching staff. Right. And and I think what his first year was 2018, right? Correct. Yeah. OK, so that was the year that you guys went to the playoffs, played the Eagles and then Cody Parkey had the double doink. Is that when that is? Yeah, unfortunately. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, if it makes you feel better, Cody Parkey in the Sunday night football game, Giants Cleveland last night, he had a doink in that game as well. Oh yeah. I I was watching that. I saw that. I was just like, how does he still have a job? I do not understand. (laughs) I know. I was like, the, the fact that this man is like, everybody knows who he is because of the fact that he, you couldn't even try to double doink a ball like in between the goalposts and the fact that he continues to just hit the goalposts it's harder to do that than the giant space between them I don't understand and and I leading up to that you know infamous double doink during that regular season he had a game against the Lions where he hit he hit the uprights like multiple times during the game it was almost foreshadowing what was going to happen in the playoffs because I don't know what what he's so good at hitting the uprights I don't know what he's doing but he seems to always doink. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't I don't know how much longer he's gonna have a job because he missed uh, yeah. he missed some very important field goals, despite that the fact that Cleveland won, but that's... let's just hope the Browns don't have to, you know, in the playoffs, you know, rely on him to get a game winning kick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that would be really crazy if it all came down to like another kick for the Browns and Cody Parkey <laughs> does the exact same thing. There's no they'd have to fire him like on the spot. Seriously. Yeah. (laughs) But um, in terms of this game, like playing the Vikings, it's a it was a bit of a a hard game, though, I think. I mean, they kept it pretty close throughout the entire thing. But I saw that like your run game got really good, especially with David Montgomery. And I think that those there's some strengths there. Um, Like, what are your thoughts on the fact that the offense is just improving even without Mitch being involved? Like like the fact that their run game has gotten so good. Yeah, this is kind of what I've always wanted from the Bears offense, you know, especially <laughs> taking the pressure off of Mitch Trubisky. And and I felt like David Montgomery was always a great running back. He just needed his opportunities. And when they finally shuffled the offensive line around, so we were really struggling early on getting any kind of run blocking protection up front. And when they moved Cody Whitehair to the guard position and put Sam Mustafer at the center position, our blocking just got a thousand times better. And you saw during that game – that Diva Montgomery, a lot of his big runs were because those guys were setting up lanes for him to run through. And so it was really just, he needed a little help up front and then he could really become that focal point for this offense. And if they can, I think this, you know, the coaches have realized now just run through David Montgomery. He's so talented and basically, I mean, yeah, take the pressure off Trubisky and it just, and then you can add those little wrinkles here and there where Trubisky could scramble or, get Allen Robinson or Darnell Mooney involved. So it's like, 
uh, David Montgomery needs to be the identity of this offense. And, and if they keep this up, there's, uh, I mean, a lot of success ahead for them. Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel that because as, so I, as you can tell, I'm a Giants fan, but yeah. they uh, like, we have Saquon on our team, obviously not so much this year because he got hurt, but our O-line was not making the room for him. And I was like, what's the point of having such a good running back if he can't go anywhere? So right. I think that, that, you know, having a good offensive line is extremely important, not only for keeping, you know, your quarterback safe, but if you want to have any sort of run game, like they can't run through five, 300 pound men. Like it doesn't work like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, so I definitely feel that there definitely are the tweaks there that can actually open up a whole realm of possibilities. Like someone like David Montgomery who ran 140 something yards in that game and was able to you know win you know win the game for you guys so I think that that is really great and then and then the fact too that the Vikings I mean the Vikings have a great run game in in Dalvin Cook Mm -hmm. but he obviously has been in and out of like getting hurt and then he's sometimes he's like he's hurt but he's still playing and like it's obvious that they're they're struggling on that end but I mean did you see anything in the Vikings that maybe they did mistakes that you guys kind of like jumped on or were they just not, you know, the best in this game? Like, what do you think about that? I feel like their offense kept answering us. I mean, our defense yeah. got a couple stops here and there, but really their, their offense seemed to get a lot of success as well, which is kind of a detriment to the Bears defense. They've been struggling as of late. But the Vikings defense, it's I just this whole season, they're just not the defense that they used to be. And Zimmer being a defensive coach, you think they would be much better. So I'm not sure what's going on with the Vikings defense because, you know, Mitchell used to struggle a little bit against the Vikings defense. But now seeing him kind of have um, a bunch of success against them, that was kind of the, the eye opener for me. But I think it's just because they got that stud receiver, Justin Jefferson. Oh, and then. Yes, no. And it's just like, they just keep getting all these great wide receivers. And then they got Dalvin Cook. And it's like, well, it's hard for, you know, I don't think Kirk Cousins is the best quarterback, but when you have those kind of weapons, it, he looks way better than he actually is. Yeah. Oh my God. <clears throat> He's so like Kirk Cousins really is like, I would say just above mediocre. And yeah. Like, but he has, you know, when Thielen went out is when I guess they brought in Justin Jefferson, who is now competing with like, Justin Herbert for rookie of the offensive rookie of the year and I was like the fact that they that I mean they I think they are that good because Kirk Cousins is like oh look there's a guy down the field oh look there's a guy down the field oh look Dalvin's behind me like he has so many tools yeah. in order to be good but even in the beginning of this season I didn't you know the Vikings really weren't wowing me all that much no and the Kirk Cousins early on was just throwing a ton of interceptions I guess yeah. he got that under control but early on he was looking pretty bad <laughs> Yeah. And in terms of the rest of the NFC North, I mean, I guess the the Lions really aren't in the mix there. But um, I like to ask people in this division because I've talked to Bears fans, I've talked to Vikings fans, and everybody hates the Packers, like yeah. despises them. Aaron Rodgers, everybody like do you do you absolutely just hate the Packers? <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's just like almost like if you're a Bears fan, it's like just I don't know. It's just a doctrine into you. Like you do not like the Packers and maybe it's just like bitterness because they just went, they go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers, and we can't find a quarterback to save our lives. Right. And so it's like, Oh my gosh, just the rich getting richer. Cause you feel like Aaron Rodgers is actually probably better than Brett Favre. So it's like, and it's just so, I think it's just frustrating because every time we would face, we face the Packers and Aaron Rodgers, he seems to always like one up us and just, he's almost like our kryptonite. So it's like, I, I have to respect him, but it's just like, man, it's just so annoying. Yeah. He's like the big brother. And it's like, it's just more for me personally, it's just like out of bitterness that I just can't root for them. No, I, yeah, I feel that. I feel that that that's kind of like the way I feel about the Cowboys. Like I actually, like, I, I hate the Cowboys, probably the most out of the NFC East, but I really don't dislike Dak Prescott. Like I think no, he's yeah. a good person and like a good player, but I'm like, can't I can't like him because he's playing our absolute rival so no I totally I totally feel that but was there any other um parts in this game that stood out to you the most before we move on um well as far as just this this Bears offense I just really like the way they're game planning the coaches 
mm-hmm. like we talked about Diva Montgomery, but having Mitchell just kind of like move outside the pocket, you know, finally Mitchell's getting back to scrambling again. And that's a big part of his game. So I feel like, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just pleased to see that this offense, it wasn't just a one game thing. Like these last three games, they've been pretty outstanding. So it's like, okay, let's keep this up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I'd, I'd like to see the bears in the playoffs. I think that that can make things very, very interesting. Yeah, but, for sure. Yeah. But the, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about was uh, jumping over to the AFC side. I wanted to talk about the Jets because <laughs> they are in this huge predicament because the Jets are now 1 and 13, making them no longer the first pick in the draft. So what are your thoughts on this? What do you feel like the Jets, should the Jets have lost? Should they have won a game? Like, what do you think in their organization would would the first pick really have made a difference for them honestly for me as just a spectator and a fan I I I never understand like rooting for your team to lose I don't know I just can't have that mentality and it's like hey if it's meant to be it's meant to be if you're meant to have that first pick you're meant to have the first pick but you have to think of all those other guys on the team they're like for them this is basically trying to add to their resume, trying to get future jobs, contracts. So it's like, they're not worried about if the Jets are going to have the first pick or not. They're trying to go out there. You know, pride also plays a part. They don't want right. to go 0-16. Right. And so I feel like, you know, the Jets, they, yeah, they have a lot of issues. I mean, goes further than just having a quarterback. I mean, their coaching front office needs a lot of work. And so it's like, they're putting a lot of pressure on Trevor Lawrence to be this like savior for them. And I don't know, that's a lot of pressure for one kid. I don't know if he can deliver. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, but I think that's what the jets do all the time. Every time that they're doing so bad, you know, when they drafted Sam Darnold, they were like, this is the guy he's going to change everything for us. And like, while Sam Darnold, I think is very good. I think that yeah. he's just had some coaching problems and things like that, but I think he could be a really great quarterback. It's like, well, you guys almost, didn't win a game at all this year but the fact that they beat the Rams like of all out, of teams, all, yeah. out of all the teams the Rams yeah. are, are like at the top of the of their division and I was like how in the world did this happen I was I was perplexed I, I was perplexed but I also um I wanted to to ask you do you think that Adam Gase should still have a job I'm surprised he even got a second job after the Dolphins. I'm just, I'm very surprised. I feel like he's been riding the coattails of um, Peyton Manning ever since he was like his, what, quarterback coach or offensive coordinator in Denver. Then he came to the Bears and was like Jay Cutler's offensive coordinator. And that's how he got hired by the Dolphins. And so it's like, after the, what happened with the Dolphins, I don't understand why he got another job. I'm surprised he even is lasting this whole season. I feel like you know, what, they fired their defensive coordinator. Why didn't they fire their head coach already? I know. And the thing is, too, last week um, I had I talked to some Jets fans about this, and they had, like, some people were saying that because they thought it would be good to tank, like, the front offices were like, we should tank. They were like, well, we'll keep Gase around because we've lost this many games with him. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just keep him till the end of the season, and he'll just keep losing. And then he comes out in Los Angeles and beats – the Rams and they were up in the beginning like almost the whole time yeah like they were they were and the thing is too I was like nah this isn't gonna last this isn't gonna last there's no there was no way I literally was like there's there's nothing that came out of this game that I or I think anybody thought the Rams would not have lost this game and if they and if they made this game if they won this game it would have like they would have got the division I think or clinched a playoff spot yeah, so, they would have clinched the playoffs. And now they're sitting there, like, now the Seahawks overtook the, the top spot in their division. So now, like, man, the Rams, what are they doing? <laughs> I have no idea. That's, like, another, like, you know, people always bag on the NFC East for being, like, one of the worst divisions. But I think the NFC West is, like, a little bit in shambles because, like, you have, like, the Seahawks losing to the Giants. The Cardinals they they're pretty good but like they have lost games that you're like why are you losing this game like the, you're, you're, yeah. out, you're doing the hail murray pass to deandre hopkins beating the buffalo bills and like now you're you're out here losing other games but i think that that division too is like kind of weird because and and the rams the rams just lost to the jets like well i don't understand what's going on at all in the nfc 
as as a whole. I know it's it's I I almost feel like it's hard to say who's the top team in the NFC because you know yeah. the Saints what the Saints just lost to the Eagles then like not too long ago so it's like all these top teams are getting beat by teams they should be beating so it's like I don't know if you can definitively say who's the best team in the NFC unless you just want to go Packers but I right. don't know with the playoffs I feel like it's even the wild card teams it's going to be so competitive because I feel like a lot of these teams are pretty evenly matched. Oh, I agree. I think that the, the the AFC people were just banking on the Chiefs and like the Steelers a few weeks ago, but now the Steelers, I think, are on a bit of, of a decline at this point. Um, yeah. I still think that they're going to win their division, but the Cleveland Browns are 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 trucking their way up. So I don't know, but yeah, I think that the NFC is so weird and competitive, and I didn't even think that the Rams were going to be in a, a conversation, like two months ago yeah I mean they did just lose to the the Jets so you know you can make that argument but yeah I think that I was I was stuck between the Saints and the Packers those were definitely the top two that I was like one of them's going to the Super Bowl but at this point you're like what if like the Washington football team comes out of nowhere yeah (laughs) somehow (laughs) clinches the spot I would I wouldn't be surprised at all and plus this season has been so crazy but uh, that was that was what I wanted to ask you about the Jets. So now I actually want to do something a little fun. So I have a segment on my show called okay. Tea Time, where I go over like gossip in the league. And I, I've never done it with a guest before, but I want to try it with you. Okay, and it should be fun. <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to do our Tea Time segment. And the, our Tea Time for this week is that the Eagles QB situation is heating up. And Carson Wentz came out and said, if Jalen Hurts is the starter, he wants to leave Philadelphia. So, which is, when I heard about that, I was like, oh my God, they're all so petty. They're so petty, but I have to get, I have to get somebody else's thoughts on it. So what are your thoughts on the fact that, you know, Jalen comes out, I mean, he's one and one right now, but he beat the New Orleans Saints and almost beat the Arizona Cardinals. So do you think that Carson Wentz maybe has a, you know, the right to say that? Or do you think that he's just being crazy? Like, what do you think? I, honestly, none of this surprises me from Carson Wentz. He's kind of been a guy that's kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I feel like he lacks a little bit of leadership intangibles that maybe he could actually learn from Jalen Hurts. And I, I feel like, it's you know, just going back to the Nick Foles situation and how there's always yeah. those rumors coming out of the Eagles locker room that they prefer Nick Foles over Carson Wentz. <laughs> yeah. And so now it's like, now they're preferring Jalen Hurts over Carson Wentz. And I feel like, I don't know if Carson Wentz is, I'm not saying he's a me guy, but he gives, gives me vibes that he, I don't know, he gets maybe a little sensitive t- sometimes yeah. when it comes to personal attacks. And um I mean, it, it just, I mean, I can imagine seeing another quarterback take over and win a Super Bowl. So I can imagine what that would do to you. But I, I feel like, you know, Carson Wentz should kind of just be the team player and just, you know, if these are his true feelings, he should kind of just be a team player and kind of keep his mouth shut for right now. And maybe just look back and see how Jalen Hurts carries himself because yeah. Jalen's like the pro's pro and it just seems like nothing's phasing him right now. Yeah, I mean, he, the fact that they beat the Saints last week, I was, I think everybody was like, I can't believe that this happened. But Jalen Hurts, you know, it seems like he almost has that mentality that he's like working for his job. You know, if he's like, if I do well, I'm going to be able to start. And then, but I kind of agree with you. Like, he's kind of being a little bit of a baby about it. Like, there are only, there's only two more weeks left in the regular season. Like, if this is your team and also you have this enormous contract whether you stay and sit on the bench you're going to get paid 30 million dollars or if you leave you're still going to get paid 30 or 60 million dollars right. like yeah. either way Carson Wentz wins and I think that he also knows that like he's like there, there's nothing bad that can come out of this but I was like what a petty thing to just come out and say just to be like, yeah, no, if, if he's keep starting, then I'm going to leave. And I'm like, I don't know. I thought that that was a bit of a, like the audacity he has to say that. And also it's like, it's not even like he was this great quarterback that they're like right. putting him to the side. Like 
he got hurt like twice or three times. Didn't He's always see, getting hurt, yeah. Didn't see the postseason for so long. Nick Foles comes in. He didn't even, you know, win that Super Bowl for the Eagles. Nick Foles is the hero in, in everybody's eyes there. I just like, I, I thought that this was crazy. I really did. But I, I think that he definitely has felt that way over the course of his career, though, with Nick Foles there, too. Because he's like, what what have he, what has he done that's good for the Eagles? Right. And it just feels like ever, I don't know, it's just there's always these rumors floating around about, like, like the way his teammates perceive him. And it's not always positive reviews. So it's like, I feel like there's so, so much smoke there. It's almost like you have to believe what's coming out. So it's like, man, because I'm thinking about the Bears, like, when Mitchell got benched, you didn't hear a peep from him. No, nothing, no rumors, no nothing like that. And it's just like Carson Wentz, there's like a way to carry yourself. And I understand like with quarterbacks, it's almost like you got to carry yourself to a higher standard. And so it's like, we shouldn't be hearing these rumors about you just kind of whining about not wanting to be a backup. Yeah. It's like, uh, I, I, and I hate when people do that too, because it's obvious like it's also, it's not like they're like, hey, Carson, like, we're ditching you, man. Like, you're done. Like, they're testing out Jalen. He plays two games. Actually, yeah. he, well, I think Carson came out and said this before yesterday's game even happened. So Jalen yeah. played one game. And Carson's <laughs> like, I'm out. I'm out. You can't, you can't, ha- you know, you can't have me and him. And I was like, dude, that's, it's, it's just not a good look. It really No, is. it's not. Yeah. And, and also, I mean, like, Doug Peterson – He's like so confused. He's also trying to play for his job. You know, he doesn't know what to do. And I mean, again, I think the only thing that's holding them back is the contract situation. There's nothing else, I think. I think the best situation, they're probably going to want to try to trade him because if they release him, they're going to still owe him all that money. So I'm like, I wonder how they're going to get out of that. (laughs) Yeah. And and there was like, I think I saw like a crazy room. Obviously, this isn't even close to being true but somebody was just like oh he's gonna end up in new england because oh cam's gonna get cam's gonna get written i don't think cam newton is going back to new england next year i mean he only signed a one probably year. not yeah i don't see him staying there so everybody was like oh carson's gonna go to new england and i was like whoa we gotta slow it down <laughs> wow yeah that'd be crazy <laughs> oh my god yeah it would be but well speaking of the patriots and i want to talk about the AFC East a little bit as well. Being the Patriots, they are officially out of playoff contention. They are not going to the playoffs for the first time in like 11 years. And the Bills come out and win the division for the first time since 1995. And I actually, I don't know how old you are, but that is before six months before I was born. Wait, when was it the last time? What'd you say? 91? 95. Oh, 95. Okay. I was two. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you were, you were alive, but obviously, you know, we were, I was not even, a, I was not even born yet. So <laughs> what are your thoughts? So what are your thoughts on the bills, Josh Allen, and also the Patriots just seems to have just lost their Patriots magic. It's almost like you look at the Patriots and you feel like, and then you look at Tom Brady, how he's doing and he's struggling a little in Tampa Bay. It's almost like Belichick and Tom Brady needed each other. And so it's like, I felt like we were kind of, we, at least me, I kind of knew that this was going to happen for the Patriots. It's almost like, how do you recover from losing like the greatest quarterback of all time? Yeah. And it's not like they have like a bunch of studs on their team. It was really like Tom Brady was always throwing to a bunch of no names. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he was the constant professional and it just kind of makes something out of nothing. So it's like the combination of Belichick and Tom Brady was so great for them and created a dynasty. It's almost like they needed each other. And so it was really, I knew going into the season, it was the bills opportunity to finally step up and take hold of this division. Mm -hmm. The question was, I kind of, I already knew that their defense was going to, you know, I always believed in their defense was really about Josh Allen taking the next step. And he's like playing at an MVP level. And he's almost like, majority of the season he's been the reason that they're winning a lot of these games you know him his size his arm and then Mm. his legs he's pretty much doing everything and surprised me because I didn't know he was going to be this great and so it's like I feel like they're they might be the team to beat in the AFC because they're just kind of like both sides of the ball they're pretty pretty great yeah and 
this this whole thing well the thing is like I had a feeling that the Bills were going to win the division this year I didn't think that the Dolphins were going to come out and be all that great but they are you know right behind the Bills right now in terms of the wild card but just I mean like I know the Patriots aren't in my division but we played them twice in the Super Bowl and I I hate the Patriots (laughs) I hate them (laughs) so much and I, again, I respect Tom Brady and I respect Bill Belichick, but I can't stand them. I right. cannot stand them. But to see the Patriots falling apart, I feel like isn't just a me thing. And I think almost like the National Football League as a whole is finally like, thank God we're finally seeing the collapse of this dynasty and yeah. somebody else can, you know, make things better. And I know that they talked about the Chiefs being the next dynasty. And the Chiefs are fantastic. But mm-hmm. I don't think that there's really, like, the next, like, best team in the NFL apart from the Chiefs. Like, that could measure up to the level of the the streak that the Patriots were on. No, I, I, I totally agree. And, I mean, Patrick Mahomes, like, every – as being a Bears fan, you're just always reminded of Patrick Mahomes and <laughs> of how we should have drafted him. But – um. Yeah, I think they, if you have your great head coach in Andy Reid, an outstanding quarterback in Patrick Mahomes, you're pretty much said it's always about that great head coach, great quarterback combination. Mm. And yeah, you think about all the other teams, the Packers and Saints, a couple of years and we look in like, who's our future quarterback? Because, you know, Aaron Rodgers and Drew, Drew Brees is definitely on his way out, but right. Aaron Rodgers doesn't have a, a lot of years left in him. So you got to think, well, who would be the next team to step up? And you're right. There's like, I don't know. <laughs> And it will be, I mean, as far as the Patriots go, it's nice, going to be, going to be nice watching the playoffs, not having to see them for once, just have some different teams. Um, But yeah, even the Steelers, Big Ben's aging. And so it's like all these good teams right now, they have a lot of aging quarterbacks. Yeah. And you think maybe the Bills, if they sustain, you know, success beyond this year, then maybe they could be one of those great teams. But I mean, you can, it's hard to say anybody can match what the Patriots have done over this like last 20 years. <laughs> right. That That's what I mean. Like there's, they, they were just so great. And even in like the years where like, maybe they weren't as great, like they were still, you know, 10 and six or, or 11 and five, like they always had a winning season. They never, yeah. they, ne- they were never bad. And now, you know, everybody's like freaking out. Cause they're like, Oh my God, it was Tom Brady the whole time. You know, Bill Belichick had nothing to do with it, which is crazy because Bill Belichick is a fantastic coach. I just don't think he had the tools this season to work with because right because Cam is also coming off like you know some injuries, a surgery, and he just obviously did not fit in with this team at all. But I'll, I just want to ask you since you mentioned that Josh Allen has playing at an MVP level, do you have someone that you think is going to win MVP this year? Man, um, that's a good question. Usually they like to give it to, I mean, you could say, you could give it to, honestly, Patrick Mahomes every year, you would say. Right, yeah. But it's like, I feel like the voters, they almost want to give it to the guy who kind of surprises you. So I feel like Josh Allen might, con- you know, I think he's, he mm-hmm. might be the favorite. And then you think about the other players, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I guess, will always be in the conversation. But honestly, there's no one that's really, I mean, Derek Henry, maybe. That could be another one. Mm -hmm. So maybe it could be, but I feel like they love to give it to the guy that kind of just comes out of nowhere and just has his outstanding season. So I feel like the voters may lean towards Josh Allen, but I don't know. Derrick Henry, I feel like could be a close second. Yeah. I mean, Derrick Henry has done some insane things. I don't know if you saw the clip of him stiff arming the guy yesterday, like full blown, just threw him on the ground with one hand. And I was like, this man is not human. He is absolutely just like a monster. Yeah. It's crazy. But no, I definitely like, I think, I don't like know how the MVP people are like, or the voters are thinking about mm-hmm. everything. Like a lot of people are saying Aaron Rodgers is going to get it. And which, you know, again, he's doing great. He's doing fantastic. But it w- I think it would be great if Josh Allen just like popped out and was just like, I'm MVP. Yeah. <laughs> because but like, Bill's Mafia is so dedicated to this man, like so, oh, yeah. so dedicated. 
like I saw the videos of him coming back from the game against the Broncos from Saturday and God, it was <laughs> so many fans COVID central. So scary in terms of that, but you could tell they were so excited and like, you know, like they're like, wow, we found our guy. It's like the feeling that you must be like to have someone can win you your games. And like, now people are talking about the bills going to the Super Bowl, which is kind of true. Like that could happen, you know? Yeah. I feel like they're the most complete team. So, I mean, yeah. why wouldn't you say them for now? And I think that the Stefan Diggs trade from the Vikings was probably one of the best things that they could have done. Yeah, definitely. I feel like the, the Vikings are doing fine without him because they got Justin Jefferson now and then the yeah. Bills are, they needed that number one guy. So I feel like win-win for them. <laughs> Yeah, and the thing is, too, I think that there was some animosity there with Stefan Diggs and, and the Vikings because he basically was just like, yeah, I'm leaving. And everybody yeah, was he like, was like pu- like publicly saying how he wanted out and everything. So I was like, oh, yeah, they both need to part ways. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I don't know exactly what happened there. But, uh, well, another interesting thing that I heard about Justin Jefferson is that he was really upset with Kirk Cousins in the <laughs> middle of the game and, like, screamed, like, F- Kirk yep I saw the clip (laughs) and I was like oh my god like (laughs) that's um I mean you know as a rookie maybe I don't know if he has the the right to really say that yet (laughs) maybe I don't know but that's that's the detriment of having no fans you can kind of pick up those kind of moments now and so you can imagine how many other times it's been happening because I remember a couple years ago like Adam Thielen going off on Kirk Cousins on the sideline maybe these players on the Vikings are like they know Kirk Cousins isn't that good and they're just like I cannot believe we have to deal with this guy (laughs) maybe because like you know you never know how they act on the sidelines or how they are as as actual people like maybe Kirk Cousins is a douchebag like we don't know me personally I've always like Kirk Cousins has always rubbed me the wrong way something about his personality does not fly with me (laughs) he kind of reminds me a little of like like they don't curse and those guys that are like golly like Like I I don't know Philip Rivers basically yeah he reminds me of Philip Rivers and Philip Rivers is like the meanest person oh my gosh yes (laughs) like he's like like talks so much trash on the field like again like doesn't say any curse words or anything but he is so mean and I feel like Kirk Cousins kind of gives me that same kind of vibe and it's like it's a little weird (laughs) no yeah I totally feel that too and yeah it's funny because like Phil Burbers I don't really like him too much either because of his personality so it's like I just maybe just people I don't know Kirk Cousins wrote people the wrong way (laughs) yeah yeah no and and you have the right to say that too because you're a Bears fan and you can you can hate on Kirk Cousins all you want yeah (laughs) but yeah so all right overall to like wrap everything up I kind of just like want your your overending thoughts on the rest of this season how you think it's gonna go do you have any Super Bowl predictions like what what are you thinking in terms of the rest of the com- the completion of this season sure so as far as the AFC I can be more objective because the Bears aren't yeah. a part of it yeah so I feel like it's gonna be between the Chiefs and the Bills I don't honestly believe in the Steelers that much I always thought they're kind of a fraud because yeah. the, the schedule they had early on was pretty easy. So easy, yeah. And so, like, I never really bought into them as, like, a team being, like, a contender. So I feel like it's going to be between the Bills and the Chiefs, just because Patrick Holmes, obviously. And then the Bills, like I said, defense, they're great. And then now they're coming together on offense. So that might be the AFC Championship game right there. Mm-hmm. As far as the NFC, um, let's hope and pray that the Bears make a run and somehow sneak in, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> But if I have to say who's going to be the competition in the NFC, it's always going to be like the Packers probably because they have Aaron Rodgers and he's still playing at a high level. Mm. And so that'll be the top competition. The Saints, Drew Brees and Sean Payton, every time they'll be this great regular season team, but they'll get to the playoffs and Mm -hmm. something bad happens and they can't somehow they can't come out with a win. So I don't necessarily believe in them too much. And then the Rams, Jared Goff is not the best quarterback. I think Sean McVay makes him look way better than he actually is. Yeah. And so the Seahawks, they're, I don't know, they're inconsistent. One week they could totally like be amazing. Like early on in the regular season, we're thinking Russell Wilson's going to be the MVP. And then uh-huh. 
it kind of like dies out and it's kind of how it usually is with the Seahawks every year. So I don't know about them. And so uh, I guess the Packers and then, I don't know, there might, and one of those teams, it might be a wild card team that just surprises some people. So we'll see there. I think the NFC is actually pretty wide open. So I have no idea what's going to happen in that conference. So, but I think AFC, I think it's pretty set. It's going to be the Chiefs or Bills. At least I know that for sure. (laughs) Yeah, no, that that's how I that's how I feel too. Way my my way too early Super Bowl prediction was Chiefs Packers. And to be honest, I thought that it was going to be Chiefs Packers last year. Um I think the 49ers snuck in there somehow, but yeah. I don't think the 49ers are all that great and they aren't even making the playoffs this year. So um but Caitlin, thank you so much for coming on. I really really appreciate it. This was so much fun to talk about everything going on in the league. Um, before we finish up, why don't you let everyone know again where they can find your podcast? Sure. Yeah. Um, Bear Down Girl podcast. You can find on iTunes, the Podbean app. It's also on Spotify now. And I drop two episodes a week. So the next one will be this Friday previewing that week 16 game for the Bears. So stay tuned for that. Great. Awesome. All right, everybody. We're going to go back to our regular scheduled podcast programming. All right, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed that interview with Caitlin. I know I did. Make sure that you check out her podcast, Bear Down Girl Podcast. Uh, Yeah, it was a lot of fun and I really enjoyed it. But let's get into our predictions for this week. Um, We, I didn't realize that I did it, but all of our predictions, our three predictions for this week are going to be all divisional games because now it's coming down to the wire here. Most of the games are divisional at this point in the season. So we have these divisional games to basically make or break some people's playoff runs. So we're going to do Eagles, Cowboys. We are going to do Bills, Patriots, and we're going to do Rams, Seahawks. So let's start off with the Eagles and the Cowboys being in the NFC East. This division, I think, is still up for grabs. It's it's so crazy. This division is ridiculous. Uh, But so the Eagles versus the Cowboys, I'm going to go with the Eagles on this one because I'll tell you why, because Jalen Hurts and you just heard our discussion with me and Caitlin talking about the quarterback situation in Philadelphia, what's going on with Carson Wentz, what's going on with Jalen Hurts. And I think that the Eagles are going to come out on top of this game because of Jalen Hurts. If Jalen Hurts comes out and loses to the Dallas Cowboys after beating the New Orleans Saints, even though they were with Taysom Hill, I think that that will be astronomically wild. So, even last week, even the loss against the Cardinals, Jalen Hurts looked great. And despite whatever Carson Wentz is talking about leaving or not leaving or whatever, Doug Peterson is sticking with Jalen. Jalen is starting this Sunday v. Dallas. I think that this this Dallas defense is not good. And I think that Jalen Hurts is still an unpredictable quarterback in this league. Nobody really knows what's going on. They only have two games of tape to watch about him. So this Dallas defense, I don't think, will be great enough to adapt to Jalen Hurts. And offensively the Eagles are probably going to pursue that and come out on top so that's my choice for the Eagles Cowboys game now the Bills Patriots game is interesting to be honest um well to go over last week's predictions that I went two for three on the only one that I got wrong was Patriots and Dolphins I was under the impression that the the Patriots were going to upset the Dolphins in this divisional matchup I did genuinely think that the Dolphins proved me wrong. I'm not upset about it because it is officially, officially official. The Patriots are not going to the playoffs this year for the first time in like 11 years. And I'm stoked, stoked. I'm so excited. I don't want to see Bill Belichick's face anywhere near January. So I'm really excited about the fact that the Patriots aren't going to be in it because that's all we've known for so long. So the Dolphins coming out on top was great. In this game, the Bills have been on such a roll, and they're already AFC East divisional champs. The Patriots are not going to come out on top in this game. The Bills are going to end up winning. Like they're the, the Patriots have nothing to win for anymore, except for 
messing up people's seasons or people's records. That's the only thing that could come out of this is that the Bills have another loss on their season, but they've already won the division. They're already going to the playoffs. The Patriots can't upset the Bills in this. And to be quite honest, I think that the Bills are so on this high of winning the division over this specific team for the for so, so long. And also, here's a fun fact. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I talked about this on my Instagram story, but the last time that the Bills won in the AFC East was 1995, December of 1995. I was born seven months later. So I was not even alive when the Bills, the last time the Bills won the AFC East. I don't know if that makes certain people feel old, but I just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, the Bills are on such a high, they're on such a roll, and the fact that this is like that last, you know, stick the knife in and twist it if they beat the Patriots, I think that Bills Mafia would love nothing more to see that. And Josh Allen, people are saying MVP, MVP. I, to be quite honest, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to win MVP, but like I low-key want Josh Allen to win MVP because it's so cool and so fun. So, yeah, I'd like to see Josh Allen win win MVP. I like Josh Allen. I like him a lot. I think that he is a great quarterback. He's proved himself over the years. He's showed how much better he's gotten over the years, and I think that he deserves it. So the Bills, I think, are going to come out on top in this Patriots matchup. Finally, we have Rams-Seahawks. Now, to come off of a loss... From the New York J-E-T-S Jets, 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 the Rams have something to prove. However, I think that Seattle is going to win this game. And I've said it throughout this entire year, I think. The Rams, while they may be good, they don't do it for me. They don't do anything for me. Seattle has... A little bit more grit while we again they have been also a team that we're not really sure what's going on there I mean after losing to the Giants a lot of people were questioning what Seattle could do and that's I think an honest and fair point to talk about but they still have DK you know and they still have Russ and they still have Tyler Lockett like they still have this amazing team the the steel the, uh, the Steelers the Seahawks are not a bad team And they think they're going to capitalize on the Rams being down on their luck. I don't know how the Jets beat them last week. I really don't. But while the Rams are going to have a fire lit under them, I do think that Seattle's going to come out on top over this game just because it is divisional and they're fighting for their space in the NFC uh, West. So it's just, this is going to be a really good matchup, I think. I think it's going to be a really good head-to-head game. But Russell Wilson is going to be, I think, just a little bit better than Jared Goff. I really don't think Jared Goff has it in him to pull off a fantastic revenge game after a loss. So those are my predictions this week. Eagles over Cowboys, Bills over Patriots, and Seahawks over Rams. All right. So since we did our tea time in my interview with Caitlin, um, in case... You guys like skipped over that or something that that our tea time was the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback situation. We're going to skip over um, the tea time, obviously, and go on to our next segment, which is going to be our Let's Talk About It segment. So this week on our Let's Talk About It segment, um, <laughs> this is fun. This is a funny one. So many of you probably know. Dwayne Haskins is now the new starting quarterback for the Washington football team. So this week, we are going to talk about Dwayne Haskins. And yeah. Oh my God. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. Dwayne Haskins has messed up big time. So Dwayne Haskins loses to the Seattle Seahawks on Sunday. He, I know people um, on my side of things, you know, being a Giants fan, people were banking on Dwayne Haskins and all that stuff when we da- when we drafted DJ. To be quite honest, yes, it, I, I probably had the thought in my mind that we wanted Dwayne Haskins, but I really wasn't sold on Dwayne Haskins at all. But 
it seems like Dwayne Haskins is like not um, the best at making personal choices. Uh, if you guys remember last year, he was supposed to be out on the field or something was supposed to be going down. He was taking a selfie with a fan. Like, it's just not great. So this time, after the loss on Sunday night, well, he went out Sunday night. I love the loss on Sunday. He went out Sunday night to a strip club where he was photographed not wearing a mask. And obviously, in this time, in everything that's going on right now, you need to be wearing a mask, especially in a gentleman's club. He's like, he's got all these people around him. There's a lot of skin going on. People were, you know, photographing him and they posted on social media. Not a great look. Not a great look. He came out. He said, you know, I want to publicly apologize for my actions this past Sunday. I spoke with Coach Rivera yesterday and took full accountability for putting my team at risk. It was irresponsible and immature of me and I respect, accept responsibility for my actions. Da, 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 da. Um, so don't worry. <laughs> Dwayne Askins said he was sorry. But I just, this is not a good look. Really not a good look. Um, there's a punishable fine. You could lose a week of your salary um, for things like this. You could be suspended for up to four games if things like this happen. So I don't know. I, I believe Washington is new about it. They're handling it internally. I guess we will get some sort of information about it later on, um, maybe this week, what the consequences of Dwayne Hacks. Dwayne Haskins actions are but come on dude really like do you not think that people are gonna either a know who you are b just be taking pictures in general c even if you're a nobody why are you going to a strip club and also wearing no mask in the middle of a global pandemic I just like I don't the the Frontal lobe development. I just, I don't understand why you thought that was a good idea. And now the pictures are out. The only thing that you can do is apologize. Dwayne Haskins in Washington is not the answer. And before Alex Smith went out with, um, I don't even know what his injury is, but he's not starting. And we obviously don't want Alex Smith to get hurt too, too much again after everything that he's been through. Dwayne Haskins is not the answer in Washington. And I don't think he ever was. And I don't think that he was the answer for... The Giants. I don't think he is the answer anywhere. I just, I don't see Dwayne Haskins doing all that great because even having a coach like Ron Rivera and things like this are happening, I just, I don't get it. So anyway, I wanted to talk about this because seriously, guys, wear, wear your mask. Wear your mask. It's so easy. It's so, it keeps your face warm in this cold weather right now. I live in New York. It just had a snowstorm. I am adoring the fact that I can wear a mask outside. My nose gets so cold. So please, 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 please wear your mask. And Dwayne Haskins, just do better. It's just, just do better. It's, it's, this is a silly thing to have got caught doing. I know he's a young kid. I know people make mistakes. We get it. We understand that. But as a leader of a team, as a quarterback, as a starter, it, you have to be responsible, and especially during this time of COVID and everything like that. So it sucks. This whole situation sucks. I'm sure Ron Rivera will give him some sort of consequence. I'm sure the NFL will give him some sort of consequence. But Dwayne Haskins, man, that's just not great. All right, let's do our last two segments for the show, and we'll close it off. So we are going to do our Tweet of the Week. And our tweet of the week this week uh, doesn't come from a NFL player, doesn't come from a broadcast or anything like that. Um, it actually comes from someone from Barstool Sports. His name is Joey Molinero. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he does a lot of impressions and stuff. And he's been super kind to me as I DM him sometimes, and he will always answer. It's very, very nice. So Joey Molinero put out this tweet, and I thought that it was a great just – so relatable and such a good, solid tweet to have. So this is what it said. Dads at sporting events get even more excited about beating traffic than they do if their team wins. I, like, I've never read anything more accurate. And I don't think we can just close in on sporting events. Have you ever been to a concert with your dad? I have. 
uh, do I always miss the last like three songs? Uh, yeah, because we got to get out of there. Like, absolutely. To be quite honest, like, I get it. You don't want to sit in that traffic. It sucks. I've sat through concerts and sporting events all the way until the end just to get that full experience. And then you're sitting in traffic just completely regretting your actions. Dads know best. <laughs> They're like, hey, listen, there's a, we're almost about to hit the two-minute warning, so uh, let's wrap it up. Let's get in the car and let's go home. We know who's going to win this game or we'll listen to the rest of it on the radio. That was our big thing. Whenever we went to Yankee games, whenever we it was like the eighth inning, we'd start wrapping it up and heading out and we'd listen to the rest of that game on the radio if it was close or if we knew who, who was going to win. So... 100% I relate to this. I'm sure a lot of other people relate to it. You got to get out of there before the traffic hits. And that's the serotonin boost that dads have. <laughs> it's great. So that's our tweet of the week this week. Shout out to Joey Molinero. Uh, he's a great guy. And finally, let's do our feel good story of the week. And since we are in our holiday attire and our holiday festive mood, with Christmas coming up. Our feel-good story today has to do with Joel Bittonio. Um, he's from the Browns. He's a guard for the Browns. And he did this great thing called Home Team Holiday Cheer, where it basically is benefiting Cleveland Recreation Centers and two kids from each of the recreation centers. I think it's about 22 or 23 recreation centers they give these kids a gift card, about $125 to this grocery store train ch- chain. I'm sorry. I think it's called Me Meijer, Me Hair. I don't really know. I've never heard of it. It must be a, an Ohio thing. But it's a supermarket. They give them a gift card for it, and then they give them a Browns themed gift bag. Usually they go out and they him and his wife, I'm assuming, go out and take these kids grocery shopping and buy them everything that they need which is really, really sweet, especially during this time of year. You know, you love to give back, and that's just the essence of the season. So while obviously being COVID season two, Joel Bittonio settled for something like this, which giving a gift card and, you know, brown stuff, it's very, very sweet, very much in the holiday spirit, which I love. I absolutely love Christmas. It's my favorite time of year. It really is. I I absolutely adore putting up the lights. I love decorating. I love baking cookies. I love giving gifts. That's like my favorite thing. I love buying people gifts. I don't know if that's corny or not, but uh, I just, I love giving people something that makes them smile. It's, it's just such a happy time. So I hope that everybody has a lovely holiday season. This is going to wrap it up for our show this week. I hope everybody has a super, super safe holiday. Don't forget to follow, subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you get your podcast from. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. And also don't forget to follow us on social media, TGWTS Podcast, on both Instagram and Twitter. So thank you guys so, so much for listening. Wear your mask, wash your hands, social distance, have a safe, safe holiday. My heart goes out to people who can't be with their loved ones. And if you are seeing your loved ones, please be safe. Please be careful. I hope you all have a fun, fantastic, sports-filled day. And I will see you guys all next week for the penultimate season or penultimate week of the NFL season, NFL Week 16. Bye!